first lesson comes from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson comes from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter beginning at the first verse. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson for today comes from John, the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this fourth weekend in Lent is Look Upon It and Live. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, I remember a story shared with me by a beloved friend who gave me permission to share this with you. Uh, he said that he was at his annual physical with his primary care doctor. He was sitting there uh, in his Johnny and had filled out all the paperwork at the beginning of his appointment. And one of the questions he'd answered was, how many alcoholic beverages do you have each day? And he had been truthful in his response. So his doctor came in, doctor who'd known him for many years, and went over things with him, questioned him, and then the doctor said to him, um, I see here that you drink so many alcoholic beverages a day. And my friend said, yes. And the doctor said to him, would you consider yourself an alcoholic? And my friend looked upon it and said, yes, I would. And the doctor said to him, would you like help in dealing with your alcohol addiction? And my friend looked upon it and said, yes, I think I would. And there began uh, his, in that epiphany, there began his turning. His turning away from his addiction, away from alcohol that was poisoning him, literally killing him, and turning to God and to AA, to a support system, a community of faith that strengthened and supported supported him in his newfound life. Look upon it and live. So, sisters and brothers, as we come near to the end of this season of Lent, this week we enter the fourth of five weeks of Lent, and we hear these words spoken to us today, look upon it and live. And so I ask you today to examine your own life, to look upon your life, and to ask yourself, what is poisoning you? What is toxic in your life? What is killing you, okay? Is it an addiction, as it was with my friend? We live in a highly addictive culture. Does something have you in its grip and you find yourself unable to uh, break free from it? Then you may wanna look upon your addiction and admit that to live. Or, could it be a toxic or poisonous attitude? Now that was the case with the Israelites in our first reading. They had been enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, generations. Uh, and God, they cried out to God for help and for God to rescue them and God did. God sent Moses to them, and Moses led the people out of Egypt, in the story of the Exodus, right? Out of slavery in Egypt, through the Red Sea, and to the promised land. 
But when they're wandering in the wilderness on their way to the promised land, now they've already experienced God setting them free from their slavery in Egypt, but they're in the desert on the way to the promised land. They're complaining about the food in the desert. They hated the detestable manna or bread from heaven that God miraculously sent to them and the quail from heaven that God sent to them. They said, we hate this detestable food and they complained against God and they complained against Moses. So, um, as it says in our first reading, poisonous snakes came among them and bit them and many died. They those who did not die realized, oh my goodness, um, how awful of us to complain about the food when God has just done this miraculous act of salvation, showing us God's saving love and rescuing us from slavery. And here we are complaining and speaking against God and against Moses. And they repented, they, return, they turned away from their they're whining and they're complaining and they asked for forgiveness. So Moses made a snake, a serpent, the symbol of what was poisonous to them and put it on a staff and said, look upon it and live. If we don't look upon the thing that is killing us, that is poisoning us, we will not be able to live, to have new life. We have to admit, we have to look upon it in order to live. And so they did. Are you like those Israelites? Is it uh, your attitude about life that is toxic, that is poisoning you? Or perhaps it's a toxic relationship. Okay. Um, St. Paul writes in the book to the Ephesians, he says, you were dead in the trespasses in which you once lived, but now you are set free from this. As a gift from God, by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, lest anyone should boast. And then he says, so let us now live in, in the, these good works that you were created. You were created for good works. You were created for good relationship with God and others, not uh, to live in trespasses um, that are, bring death, not to live in, in relationships that are toxic and poisonous and killing you, okay? Look upon it and live. Own it. Be brave enough, courageous enough to look upon the whatever it might be, addictions, attitude, relationships, anything in your life that is poisoning you, that is toxic, that is killing you. Look upon it, admit it, and live. Lent is a time of self-examination, of looking upon our hearts, our minds, our souls, our lives, and really having the courage to admit those areas of our lives that need to be cleansed by God. Now remember, today's gospel is part of a longer conversation with a Pharisee, a Jewish leader named Nicodemus, who comes to Jesus by night. And in the Gospel of John, darkness and light is, is very, it's used throughout the Gospel to represent um, darkness as, as, as evil, as those things we're trying to hide, as our sin, as that which is negative in our lives, that's, that which is poisonous or toxic, and light as Christ, the light of Christ. So Nicodemus, it's interesting, comes by night. He has some things in his life that he wants to keep hidden. Um, in the gospel for today, in that part of it, um, 
Jesus says to Nicodemus that unless you are born from above, unless you're born in a new way, unless you're born of water and the spirit, you will not um, have uh, this eternal life. And um, Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, put it on a staff and lifted it up, that's become the symbol for physicians, for doctors. Um, and even in biblical times, snakes were a symbol of wisdom, of healing, and of eternity. And so Jesus says, just as the sun, as Moses raised up the, the serpent on the staff and the people looked upon it, looked upon that which represented their sin, but therein also their healing, so, Jesus says, the Son of Man will also be lifted up on the cross, that we can look upon Jesus on the cross and see both our sin and our healing and our salvation. So, the gospel for today continues. This is the verdict. Okay, this is the verdict that light has come into the world but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Jesus continues, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light because they don't want their deeds to be exposed. But those who do what is true, or some translations say who live by the truth, Come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I remember years ago visiting a memory care unit. Uh, and there was a sign in front of the building that said, always tell the truth. That way you never have to remember what you said. And I really chuckled at that. But I also thought of a woman in my congregation who was coming to me because um, her family um, was not at all about the truth. And she really wanted to speak the truth, but they always said, no, no, you have to keep these family secrets. Everything has to be kept secret. Everything has to be in the dark. We don't want anyone knowing the truth about us. And it was literally poisoning her, um, poisoning the whole family, really. And so, again, look upon it, look upon it, own it, admit it, and live. Um, St. Patrick is someone we celebrate this coming Wednesday. And um, many people uh don't know some basics about St. Patrick, but one thing that a lot of people don't know that I think is pretty fascinating is he actually was not Irish. He was British and he was kidnapped when he was 16 years old by Irish pirates and brought to Ireland um, and was a slave there for six years. And then he escaped and went back to England but he really, something about Ireland had, had, had a grip on his soul in a positive way. And years later, when he was ordained and then became a bishop, he asked to go back to Ireland. And so he went back to Ireland to the very people who had enslaved him. But now he went back as bishop. And he was a passionate um, uh opponent of slavery and showed the, the people of Ireland the, the horrible wrongs of slavery. And he knew from his own experience, this horrible experience of his own life, he knew the evils of slavery. And it is from that horrible experience, look upon it and live. And he he didn't forget, he didn't brush it under the carpet when he returned to Ireland. He, he brought it right out to the people that slavery is wrong. You enslaved me, 
it was uh, horrible and you need to own this and look upon it and live. And at that time, there were also some young women who were being trafficked as sex slaves and he spoke out adamantly against this. So in addition to all the wonderful things we know about St. Patrick today, may we also realize that he was the first in our Christian tradition to really speak out um, passionately against the sin of slavery. Look upon it and live. Now, finally, um, I want to bring it back full circle to Nicodemus, the guy, the Pharisee who came to Jesus by night. And at the end of today's gospel, where Jesus talks about darkness and light, and of course, Nicodemus had some stuff to hide because he came by night. But that's not the end of the story for Nicodemus. At the end of the Gospel of John in chapter 19, after Jesus's uh, crucifixion on the cross, Nicodemus comes by light of day this time, carrying many, many pounds of costly ointment and he and another Pharisee, Joseph of Arimathea, um, take Jesus's body down from the cross and put it in Joseph's of Arimathea's tomb. And Nicodemus gives this beautiful gift of all these arom aromatic spices to anoint Jesus's body. So Nicodemus, um, whatever... Uh, we think happened in that conversation with Jesus at the beginning of the gospel when he came to Jesus by night. And Jesus talked about, about coming into the light, looking upon our lives, admitting what is wrong, what needs God's healing and light and transformation and owning it. And Nicodemus um, went away but we know that the rest of the story is that he let that light of Christ transform him so that at the end of the gospel, he returns by light of day to openly follow Jesus, even when Jesus is crucified and dies. Nicodemus shows up to give his gift to Christ, showing that when we have the courage to look upon whatever it is in our lives that is poisoning us, that is killing us, and when we have the courage to bring that to Christ, Christ tells us, look upon it and live. Look upon him on the cross, that symbol of light, of grace, of love poured out for us. Look upon him and he will give us transformation and life, eternal life. Amen.
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.